Hi, welcome back to the Cosmic Classroom. We'll now talk about Newton's third law, which states that whenever a body exerts first force on a second body, the second body exerts an equal and opposite first opposite force on the first body. So it's commonly referred to as action and reaction law, which is a terrible name because action and reaction makes you think that there's a causal effect. There's something that happens that then creates a reaction. And that's not the case at all. You know, forces only happen in pairs in nature. You can't have one force without its reaction. So really they come together. One is not a reaction to the other. So for example, force of gravity. Right, very important force in astronomy, the most important force in astronomy. You have two objects, mass one and mass two, that are attracted um, to each other due to gravity. Now, let's take a look at these forces. The force by mass one on mass two is represented here in blue. You see mass one is attracting mass two, which is represented in blue. And the force by mass two on mass one is represented in red. Notice that the force depends on the product of the masses and the distance between them. So if you compute the force by mass 1 on M2 or by mass 2 on M1, they're the same. They have the same size, right? Because the product of the masses is the same, the distance between the masses is the same. It's the same force, right? The only thing that's different is that they are in opposite directions, right? Because if you go back to the figure, you'll see that M2 is pulling on M1 to the right with this uh, intensity that's shown in red. And M1 is pulling on M2 with the blue force to the left. So they are same size, in other words, equal magnitude in opposite direction. This is a clear case, a typical action-reaction pair. All right? I'm going to show you a few more examples. So for example, uh, a rocket. Okay, if you, if you study the forces that make a rocket uh, fly in space, you have the force by the hot gas on the rocket, and you have the force by the, hot, by the rocket on the hot gas. Again, notice how they are the same size in opposite directions. And one cannot happen without the other. The same thing in a very common situation when you're trying to move, to run, to get somewhere. In this drawing that I found on the internet, it states as action and reaction. But really, how do you choose whether it's which one is action, which one is reaction? They happen together. There is no reaction without action or action without the reaction. So it's really a bad name. I'd rather say that one is the force by the ground on the foot, and the pair is the force by the foot on the ground. So one easy trick to remember the action-reaction pairs the two, the, is to think of one is the force by one on two. The other is the force by two on one. And so I've been telling you that the force is the same, only the direction is different. But if you see this uh, image, this was a bug that hit a windshield, right? And, and this doesn't look right. After all, I just told you that the force by the windshield on the bug is the same as the force by the bug on the windshield. But clearly, the bug is much more unhappy than the windshield, correct? It's because the forces are the same. I didn't lie to you, but the acceleration caused on the bug is much bigger than the acceleration caused on the car. Let's think about this. F equals ma. The force is the same. The mass of the bug is small. Therefore, the acceleration of the bug is high. The bug was traveling with a certain velocity. And not only it comes to a stop, but now it's traveling with the car in an opposite direction. So it's a huge acceleration. And the acceleration is something you feel, as you can clearly see, that the bug felt that acceleration, right? It's in pieces right now. Now, the acceleration that it's, the bug causes on the car is very small because the car is so massive. So the force is the same, but the mass of the car is so big 
that the acceleration of the car is small and the car doesn't feel it because it's so small, right? So very important to understand the difference between force and acceleration. And it's acceleration that you feel in your gut. That's what it is. So when trying to think about Newton's third law, always think a pair, force by object one on object two, force by object two on object one. And if you're studying physics and you need to be drawing free body diagrams, remember that the forces are always on a separate, on, on different objects. So if you have one force in object one, you have another force in object two. They are never in the same object, all right? So I hope it helps you understand Newton's third law. I'll see you next time.